Welcome traders to this live webinar with Admo Markets. My name is Chris and today we're going to take a look of course at Forex commodities and stock indices. Before, before we do that though, be aware of this disclaimer. It explains the fact that this webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmoMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity for more details. Also please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. So good morning, Melvin. Good to see everyone here. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at waves and uh, try to dissect a bit what the wave patterns uh, look like on the majors and other instruments. Besides that, we will be looking at trend and momentum. We'll be looking at other patterns besides wave patterns, of course, but that will be uh, receive some, some more focus today. But chart patterns, of course, candlestick patterns, very important. Support and resistance, too, for understanding where price uh, might have some struggles, especially if there's confluence in certain areas. That's always very strong, of course, bouncing spots. And uh, ultimately, when we tie up these three, these three points, trend, patterns and the support of resistance <clears throat> then uh, you get to understand uh, the path of least resistance a bit better you understand where price might be heading to at what levels are key where's confluence and then i can set up my decision zones decide what i want to see breaks or bounces at those decision zones and then wait for triggers to confirm uh, my analysis before trading, though, always be aware of the calendar, of course. As you know, always take a look at, uh, for instance, you can do that by AdmiralMarkets.com. Go to Analytics, click on Forex Calendar. Today, we had some news, economic data from China. We have some from Great Britain, claim and count change, unemployment rate. Uh, and I think we have some U.S. news here, as well as you can see, housing starts. So take a look at that. Uh, and... Uh, Take a, be aware of that. Also, Bank of Canada interest rate decision right away. It's expected to stay the same at 0.5%. To get a bit more info regarding uh, analytics or analysis, you can do that to fundamental technical wave analysis, for instance. You can also go to market heat map that would show basically the movers of yesterday. Big movement on the Euro New Zealand, pound CAD, what is it here? I cannot read it. Pound yen, pound Swissy, pound dollar. Well, pound is moving a lot. So it wouldn't be surprising to see, of course, pound being the most volatile yet again. That's quite normal. And a number basically following that, quite a uh, small difference between the rest, actually. <clears throat> Regarding the wave analysis, as always, Monday, I'm oh, sorry, every morning, um, not only Monday, every morning, uh, I post my wave structure for the three majors, euro, dollar, pound, dollar, dollar, yen. And today I am expecting basically the continuation of the ABC. We talked about that yesterday, that there could be a breakout if it breaks above this resistance point. It didn't. It actually stalled here, failed to break, and bounced for a bigger correction down. So what, when that happened, basically... Uh, when when basically five to six candles didn't break the top here, there was a stronger likelihood that the green A was finished. <clears throat> now at that time when we had the webinar, uh, I think we didn't have five to six, or we were right at five to six candles. I don't think we had it yet. So that's why I was saying if it breaks above uh, the resistance of A, it could still push further, right? It didn't break, so it bounced instead. And the reason why it bounced is most likely, in my view, because it's a, an ABC. Now, that will remain to be seen. Uh, we, you know, we'll have to see if price can get up to to higher fib levels like this. If it does, I still think that is a bearish, uh, basically, uh, potential for a turnaround. So let's take a look at that was this morning, basically on the euro dollar, and we'll go one by one. Uh, through these wave counts uh, on pound and dollar yen. <clears throat> All right. So let's take a look what's going on right now. And you can see that basically price is 
challenging the support level. So it seems a bit, um, yeah, how do I say it? It seems a bit uh, dangerous in a way because it's really getting close to breaking, but it hasn't broken yet. So it could still be a bouncing spot. This could still be a, a correction and we could complete that zigzag. But if it does push through this support, if it does push through 110, sorry, 109.70, then this is not going to be a, a zigzag probably. I would have to change the wave count in that case. Let's go back. You see, if you look at the four hour chart at this moment, we see basically a bigger uh, triangle here, right? Here was bearish momentum. That's why I was still bearish in, in this triangle. Then we got the break, pullback, continue. And what I'm expecting is basically a push up to one of these three fibs and then a turnaround back down again. So from, from my perspective, the most interesting trades are shorts at 38.2 fib, 110.70, 50 fib, 111, and 61.8 fib, 111.30. So if price does get there, I think those are very good levels for shorting. I would look for candlestick patterns at any of these fibs, bearish candlestick patterns for a, a bearish turn and bearish bounce. If, however, price does not make this upside to those fibs, Right, does not complete this uh, basically this ABC. Uh, then of course I cannot short it here, obviously. Uh, but in that case, it would probably the alternative could be that price stays within these orange and green lines. Then it might still break to the upside later on, or it might break support for downside. If it breaks support, then obviously it's not going to get up to those levels. I would like to short it. So in that case, uh, I would take would try to trade to break out i there are different ways one can trade a breakout it could be the candlestick you know a good candlestick pushing through the trend line uh, with a close in the low it could be on the lower time frame when zooming into lower time frames and looking for on a five in this case maybe five or 15 because this is this is an hourly chart so when i zoom in that would be to five or 15 and look for a bit of a bit of a pattern like this. Look for a break. Sorry. Look for a break. Look for kind of a triangle like this or a flag. And trade the bounce or break after that. That would be another way. So we have to see. Price is right at it. Right at, at this line as we speak. So it's a bounce or break spot in my opinion. It could also bounce, so let's take a look at that then. Five minute chart. If it does bounce, if this basically um, is a correction perhaps, and this could be a bouncing spot, right? Because it's still above this bottom. Then on a five minute chart, I would like to see five to six candles at the minimum not break this bottom. So if I see something like this, two, three, four, five, and then probably six, seven then this is probably a hook back this is probably an inverted head and shoulders of a five minute chart that is not too important the inverted head and shoulders on a five minute chart is really not uh, something i would be trading every single time but in this context because of the confluence because of the fact that you know price is at a, at a, at a key support level key trend line key bottoms here invalidation level from a wave perspective, you know, if, if it then shows weakness here, right, and it shows inverted head and shoulders, it shows time factor, then yes, this correction could be over. Also, if you look at it from a wave perspective, uh, this could be, if it is an ABC zigzag, right, then the C could be finished. Why? Because look, internally, you could pretty much simply see five waves there. I don't think you, you don't have to be an expert wave analyst to see those, right? Is five out of C finished? In my opinion, time factor will help us with that. And within A, you see five, two very easily. One, two, three, four, five.
So this could be a correction like that. And it prices in the bouncing spot. So time will tell. Let's keep an eye on this. Candle number, this is the first candle. Just closed a few seconds ago. That does not have a lower low. The second candle before it had, technically speaking, a lower low, although it closed bullish. So that was actually a pretty bullish candle. Two, tech, two candles ago, let's zoom in really. I know these are five-minute candles, but still, if we're looking for a bounce of a five-minute chart, it, it makes sense. So bullish candle, that's already a pretty, uh, that's a divergent bar already. That That is pretty significant. Um, then we have a failure for a lower low. So it looks like it could be bouncing, but from a time factor perspective, this is candle number one. So we'll go back to this as it, as it progresses. Let's dive into the pound USD. All right, so let's see. Yesterday, we had the break. We were looking at it somewhere in here. No, I'm getting a mix here. Sorry, here. It looked very similar. That's why <laughs> the spot always looked identical. But yeah, it was here. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six was still bullish. So if that's the case, I always want to still see the next candle. That did push for a higher high. And we did get uh, an intraday push of 70, 80 pips. So anyone looking for that continuation, um, we had the opportunity for the pound as it did push up. I think that still could be in a bouncing spot. Let's put a fib from here to here for the moment. Let's actually take a look quickly at the, the wave count on the pound. So a pound downtrend, right? Massive thousand pip fall two weeks ago. That looks like a wave three momentum. You know, wave three is very powerful, very strong. Um, they got a good momentum riding behind it. That's typical for wave three. Well, two weeks ago, we certainly had that. So for the moment, that's wave three. Last week, I said, be careful because after such a push, it's typical you're going to see a triangle consolidation. That's what happened so far. We're still in that process. And um, I actually think that this wave four is going to be bigger. We exceeded the five to six days after posting a low here, posting a lower low. So it looks like, in my best estimate at this point, that um, it will not break until next week at the earliest, maybe even the week after. But I don't think this week personally. So I think it's going to stay in this range um, and uh, consolidate in this area. Now, what kind of consolidations could we get? Let's zoom into the hourly chart. And basically, you can see here that big fall of the wave three and then the consolidation ever since. Uh, price was basically making, uh, we expected the, the, the drop here to challenge the bottom. Uh, and I was expecting to move up to challenge the top again, and that's what happened. How far can it push up? Well, in my opinion, this within the wave C here, uh, we could easily see another push up. I think it's possible, but price should not break below basically 122, 122.30. I think it should bounce at 122.50 probably. So let's take a look. Where is it now? Well, it's at 122.50. I guess it just hit 122.50. Let's see. Let me quickly look at the where I have the fib here. Alrighty. Yeah, that looks like the, the right fib, I guess. Okay. Anyhow, uh, let me move this fib a bit like this. All right. And here, correct that a bit. Okay. So, looks like it's at the 38.2 fib. I think that this could be a bouncing spot. It's the same like the euro dollar, really, in my opinion. Let's zoom into the five-minute chart. We have one, two, one, two, three, four. This is the fifth candle. Uh, it has to close still, so that has five minutes left. This is the fourth. Four, four candles have closed, 
and I've not broken this low. And so I, I would do the same tactic as with the euro dollar, I think. This could be a 38.2 fib bounce. I know that the total environment is bearish, but the thing is that uh, I don't see the euro dollar necessarily continuing with that bearishness uh, trend this week. So the alternative could be to skip the pound entirely, or at least the pound USD, and wait for this consolidation to finish, and then trade with the trend. Uh, that's very prudent. That's a very good uh, strategy as well. Uh, if you're still, let's say, looking for a trade, I think then in that case, probably reversal trades are the only thing that's that's really uh, left at this moment. Now, I could be wrong, but if I'm wrong, then I would only consider that if price breaks below 122. Although I would be worried if price breaks below 122.50 uh, or 122.25. Otherwise, like yesterday, I think that basically there's going to be some intraday upside today, most likely. <clears throat> so uh, it's moving pretty fast now. Let's see. It's the fifth candle. So what I would like to see, I'm not sure if it's going to happen on the pound, but what I would like to see is five to six candles now breaking this bottom and then make a hook back like this <clears throat> and then take that weakness hook back like that. Sometimes I put a fib from this bottom to this top, and I wait for the pullback. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen. It's, it's sometimes it, it it is possible that it just kind of impulsively moves away from the area, and it doesn't give this little kind of hick, pullback or retracement. So yeah, then I most cases I or not most cases, but definitely in some cases. Uh, in a decent number of cases, I might just miss this trade. Not always. It depends, really, uh, you know, at certain certain circumstances. I definitely look for five to six candles, and it depends. Sometimes I just take it right at the fifth or sixth. Uh, so it depends on the structure, in a way. If it's something like this, I would probably skip it. But to be honest, but uh, if the fifth or sixth candle is pretty close to the bottom. You know that that I don't necessarily wait for a, a strong retracement, but in this case, I think a retracement is is better. But yeah, it's definitely looking now that this bottom is not going to be broken. The question is now, I think, how far can it retrace? So, I can put a fib from here to here for the moment and uh, see if you can get back to the 50 fib. Of course, that depends. Will this be the stopping spot? We'll keep an eye on this, just like the euro dollar. Once again, the reason why, basically, what I'm looking for, this is, in my opinion, still uh, momentum. This is looking like a correction. So I'm basically looking for a bounce at support for one more push-up like this. So... We'll, we'll monitor this live. We'll try to see, um, you know, discuss these bounces as they happen. The euro dollar is also bouncing pretty aggressively. All right. Uh, let's take a quick look at euro pound. I didn't expect upside continuation just because it's at a 78.6 fib. It, too, needs to consolidate like the pound USD. And actually what it did was break this triangle to the downside instead all right, but it could be just a zigzag. I'm not. I think the euro pound could be quite neutral for uh, for this moment, at least. Dollar yen is, uh, in my opinion, let's take a look at the wave count. It's actually breaking to the downside here. All right, that is not what I'm expecting. The wave count uh, was, in my opinion, bullish. But of course, if the dollar is weakening against the euro and pound, then it could also slightly, at least slightly, weaken against the yen. So that's not too surprising. But from a wave count perspective, uh, I consider this to be kind of wave fours, looking for the breakout uh, above the previous top for an uptrend continuation. From an hourly perspective, that means that if it breaks above this orange trend line, I think there could be a good challenge upwards. Now, this particular wave one, two is valid if price stays above 103.33, right there. So if price could still move lower, 
but as long as it stays above 103.33, this is still valid. Now, if it breaks below 103.33, then it's obviously not a wave one two. It's, it's just that's a rule, right? Wave two cannot retrace lower than the origin of wave one or the start of wave one. That's off the table. But then, even if that happens, I still think it's a bullish environment because of the fact that uh, basically we had impulse here, uh, and this is just sideways correction, basically. Um, even if it dashes a bit below it, 103.30, uh, I think that as long as price stays above 102.50, it's still in a bullish environment. The retracement is just, just a bit deeper than uh, expected. So what is it doing right now? Let's take a look. Dolly N is challenging uh, 103.50, but not 103.30 as yet. It did break this trend line. It is making a bearish break, but in my opinion, it is still close to a bullish bouncing spot. You know, be, obviously because am I, you know, prices at support. Uh, it is at this moment when you look left to your chart, you see a ton of support. So. It is not something that I'm interested in shorting. In fact, if anything, uh, I think that I would just <clears throat> rather wait for the dollar weakness kind of to fade away. I think that that might happen at the end of the day. I think we could see some consolidation here on the dollar yen like it's been doing. And uh, as, as the euro dollar, pound dollar, if, if they do start an upside, then once that is finished, then we might see the dollar kind of retrace on the, on the euro dollar, pound dollar, but we might see it strengthening against the yen. So I think it's a question of patience here. It, I don't think it's set up right now for the, for the moment, especially with the euro dollar, you know, with the dollar kind of in mind. But later, uh, I do think that it's a bouncing spot, whether it's uh, here or, or here or here, right? Um, but I think it is still in the bouncing zone especially above 1 or 250. And the other alternative would be eventually uh, the breakout above this, this trend line. But obviously price broke below the support line, so it looks like it will first of all bounce before it will break. So those are the three uh, majors uh, for the moment, my view. On those, uh, Pound has uh, confirmed one, two, three, four, five candles. It actually hit the 38.2 fib in the meantime, a bit sneakily because uh, it did that right at the start of this, this candle. But uh, to be honest, I think that I would rather wait for it's maybe, I, in a, yeah, in any case, I think a slightly bigger hook back could be perhaps a bit better here. Uh, the euro dollar, one, two, three, four, this is four. The current one is fifth. All right, Aussie, yesterday, was talking about the Aussie. I said, I'm not interested in the Aussie myself because I, I expect it to go, if anything, I expect it to go sideways. If it does move, right, then, and if it does break higher, I just want to see the, today's daily close near the, near the high. Or if there is a good movement in, to the downside, then we'll see a big wick on the daily candle. So those alternatives did not happen. We did actually get the sideways move. As discussed yesterday in the webinar, we were here, and indeed, boom, sideways. Nothing to trade on the Aussie yesterday. So that was good. We avoided that sideways mess. Let's take a look at that daily candle, as promised. The daily candle is okay-ish. It's not fantastic. It has a, a total body of uh, about uh, 88 pips. No. 68 pips, excuse me, quite small, although not untypical for the Aussie. The Aussie does not move as much as the pound yen, for instance. The close is 23 pips off. So 23 divided by 68 is a pretty high percentage, in fact. Yeah, that's 34%. That is not the best close. I mean, it is okay-ish. I mean, best is within 20%. 30% is okay. This is even actually below okay, so it's that's why I say okay-ish. Uh, it, it could have been better, to be honest. 
uh, a bit disappointed about that close. Would have hoped for um, the, the the bulls to hold on to that uh, yeah, bullishness a bit better. But yeah, I, I think it could be just enough for a, a push higher. But yeah, it's, it's especially if you look at the four-hour chart. Look, let's take a look. One, two, three, four. This is the fifth candle. The fifth candle is bearish, though. It's definitely not as nice as I uh, would have hoped for. If we put a, a, a fib on the daily candle, on yesterday's candle, we see price for the moment stopping at these fibs. Let me quickly add an oscillator here. There is divergence between these tops, but it's single. Well, I I don't think I would trade this fib. I think the daily candle is not strong enough for that. I think with divergence on the hourly, with four hour kind of turning the oscillator here, I don't think it's worth trading the fib. You see, the thing is that if it breaks the support and then I start buying it on a fib, I don't know how far this could retrace. It could bounce, but I would rather wait for this to finish and see how far it goes and then look for a bounce. That could be one alternative. But also mind you that that bounce, if, it, if there's momentum here, that bounce could be weak. Maybe this is just starting another, a bigger bounce back to the bottom. See, that's a bit of a danger here. Um, so I would have envisioned a different scenario yesterday that really didn't pan out. So I think that probably the best way to go long I know that sounds maybe not, but you know, for some of you, you're thinking, why go long? You're right at resistance. In this case, I think that the triangle is about to complete. That's why I think that uh, we've tested this resistance three times. I think that there is going to be a moment where we get the breakout. I was thinking about positioning myself before that breakout happens, but only if it makes sense. And if I see good momentum, that daily candle close yesterday didn't really confirm that. Uh, it's still okay. -ish. So if I see maybe a strong four-hour candle here, this this four-hour candle, if it's if it's closes bullish near the high, or if it engulfs the last four-hour candle, yeah, that might be a signal for me to to trade it. Otherwise, I probably would not. I would skip it because otherwise, I think it's a vulnerable spot. Just be just very simply because um, yes, it, I was looking for a breakout but it could also bounce and just head back to that support and then bounce again and continue within this triangle. <clears throat> so that's why I probably want to see this four hour candle. If this four hour candle has a wick or is bearish, uh, then um, I would definitely stay out of the Aussie and I think that there, there's an increasing chance that it could make some correction probably. Uh, it's, if it's worth trading to the downside, it's possible. If this one is bearish, let's say this, this, this candle is bearish like this with the closing to low, pushes through the support trend line. When I think about it, I think that uh, it is definitely possible um, to, 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 to take a trade like that with uh, an entry here or a slight retracement, stop loss above it, just aim for all conservative target would be here at... 76, more aggressive at 75.50. So yeah, basically that would be uh, the way to trade uh, a bearish bounce. So that sometimes, you know, those, those things happen. If, if you're at a, let's say a decision spot and sometimes the analysis can be seen both ways, then sometimes I'm okay with trading it both ways uh, at at such a zone, depending on how how the price flows and and breaks and bounces, sometimes I analyze it and I say no, I'm only waiting to trade it uh, short or long. I'm not taking you know uh, this this direction. But 
or that direction. But in this case, I you know it is at a decision zone, and I think it uh, it's possible. Now, which time frame are you looking at, uh, Sam? You're just talking about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five waves. Uh, are you talking about this? Like this? Like these? Uh, is that what you're thinking about? How I draw it now, like this one, two. Ah, uh, this may be an ABC. Ah, uh, got it, yeah. And it could be now I went to three, four, five. Well, you have a very good point because there is divergence between these tops. And wave three should not be the weakest. So uh, that this that's a that's a very, very strong point that this is not a a wave three, or or most likely. It shouldn't be. It would be very odd if that's the case. It could sometimes happen with leading and ending diagonals, but that's a different story. It does not seem very likely a story at this point. Uh, so from a four-hour perspective, let's see. If this is an ABC, uh, let's take a quick look at daily. I don't have any wave count on the Aussie, so I need to take a quick look here. That's, it's a bit difficult to see on the daily because it's so choppy that it becomes quite complex. Uh, this does look like uh, a five wave up. Uh, this looks quite choppy downside. So what could happen is that you know, this is an impulse. The blue part is an impulse. This is the first correction. This is a second correction. And we go down for a third correction. And then we get the bounce and break following this momentum. So from that perspective, an ABC could be part of X indeed. So that would lean itself towards this. Now, alternatively, we don't know if, if the C part is necessarily finished. So it could be an ABC, but it doesn't have to necessarily mean that C finishes here. If we look within C, we can see one, two. This could be a three, four, five, or it could be a one, two, three, four, five still. So that's why I wouldn't want to short it right now as yet. Also, a different thing to keep in mind, why I still want a little bit more confirmation um, about either direction. Uh, is, let's see, doesn't seem as likely perhaps at this moment, but this could still be a wave 5, and it could be a wave 5 out of 5, for instance. Uh, but it is true, though, no matter how you look at it, uh, the upside seems a bit shaky from that perspective. Uh, also, if you look at the wave perspective. So so from that point of view, uh, there could be not much space left before we get some downside retracement. Either, you know, no matter what kind of wave count we look at, almost. Uh, the one thing that would make an upside more likely is if we get the retracement, then we have more space to the upside. Or if we get upside, and then we get the bigger retracement. So. Looks like some bearish retracement is ahead of us. But uh, at this moment, I don't think we have confirmation either either way. All right. Uh, let's see. Today, building permit news. It could go sideways until the news, indeed. It's definitely possible. Could just continue with this uh, consolidation. Alrighty, um, US dollar index, definitely. Let's take a look at that. All 
already with MACD. Okay, we can add, add, add the MACD. Let's see oscillators. There we go. So the dollar index broke, strong weekly candle. It's still within basically the range, right? But it did break the trend line. Still looks pretty corrective start though. So that's why on the euro dollar I'm still thinking about a triangle because the thing is the dollar could still test the top, make one more correction and then really start to the uptrend. So the reason why I'm thinking that uh, is because the start is pretty choppy and also because this entire correction here uh, could still just expand. So that's why I'm thinking more like this than like this. But it doesn't mean it cannot find some upside leg still because or space because we got some momentum here riding behind it. And looking at the MACD, it's still building upside here for our chart. Strong momentum, retracing back to the zero line. This is sideways. This is strong. So we got bullish momentum. We got sideways correction. That's leaning itself for more upside. At least to the previous resistance and the previous top. Uh, divergence. Uh, not in my opinion because I'll tell you why because you see this top here it's it's way higher than uh, the previous tops so that's that's good that's good strength that's good momentum especially because if you consider also this this movement it made in this part and as it went back to the zero line it went nowhere just sideways now what you might be seeing is a divergence on the hourly chart because what you probably are talking about is the fact that here it's kind of going down, I think. And on the hourly chart, you'll see that a bit better. You'll see basically price um, make a tad of kind of a double top, make a bit of a weakness here. So this is why it's kind of consolidating at the moment. When can that consolidation end? Let's take a look. This is candle number 14. It, I think it could be over any second, or any well, second, <laughs> uh, soon. Um, we have convergence, convergence here. I think it's just a question of breaking above resistance at this moment. Break above here, should have the breakout. Or alternatively, if it bounces, we talked about the Al New Zealand yesterday and the fact that this looks a five wave pattern up one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this looks like it's going to be an ABC correction. So yesterday uh, we saw price move up. Uh, yesterday we were looking at price around here it hit the 50 fib indeed has been moving lower ever since but i'm not convinced necessarily that that will be uh you know the it could still go up to hit the 61.8 before moving down corrections can be complex but ultimately i think it is doing uh, this this abc the start of a correction uh it seems to be continuing so i'm looking for price once again to get down to 105 30 105 104 70 for a, a, a larger or longer uh, push-up. Well, now let's take a look at the Kiwi. Uh, it uh, did make some upside. I was a bit uh, also here warning that I don't think there's much space. Uh, it did move up a decent 40 pips for the Kiwi. Uh, kind of breaking through the 61.8 target, choppily making a last push up to that minus 100 target there. Uh, so it still made some upside. However, uh, I wasn't a big fan of the upside just because resistance uh, was very near, I think. Also, the zigzag seemed close to be completing, so didn't seem worth it to me. 
Uh, at this moment, we had a pretty bearish reaction for our candle at that target. That looks like a pretty strong pin bar. We've had a, a decent run up. We've had a good momentum up. Uh, but uh, that four hour candle, the previous one, uh, looks like it's a candlestick pattern, a pin bar that is marking the end of that bullish momentum, in my opinion. So that swing high, swing low, I think, is probably over. Um, and that's mainly because A, there's resistance, B, uh, there's a bullish pin bar. A bullish pin bar looks good to me. It has a decent wick. I'm talking about, once again, just to be sure, I'm talking about this pin bar right here. Uh, let me put a quick box around it, if possible. Let's see. Uh, anyhow, this one, I'm talking about this one. Let me do it this way. So, uh, yeah, a decent wick. It has a bearish close near the low. Uh, it, uh, it is also a close that is not only near low, but it's below the previous close. And it's a decent size candle, too. So, I mean, we've had that before. We've had that here. So, it's not everything. That, too, happened at the 61.8 target. So that's something to be aware of. But at that moment, uh, these stochastics, for instance, you know, was still pretty flat. It seems to be crawling lower now. I mean, so there's probably a chance we'll go back below 80 here. It just seems to be tipping a bit. I think there's a bit more confluence at this spot. Let's take a look at lower time frames as well. Uh, yesterday, there was basically on a 50-minute chart, we see at least on a 50-minute chart, we see at least divergence. You see, the thing is, Yesterday, we didn't even have that. This was not divergence. That was five-minute divergence, not 15. Now we had 15, finally. So, But the thing is, though, one, you have to be careful because this could just turn into a, a bull flag, to be honest. There's no divergence on the hourly. And it could just be a bull flag like this. That's the a bit of a risk with this trade, I think. But maybe worth taking the risk. If it does make a bull flag, get out, you know, or move the stop loss to break even. Uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess. Let's see. Uh, trend line of four hours and divergence. Four hour chart. Um, trend line of four hour chart and divergence. I don't see divergence on the four hour chart. I see divergence here between these bottoms. That's why we probably got that strong upside. The upside, I don't see it. I mean, if I compare this top here, it's coveraging. If I compare it to this, but that's, I think, not good because we really, it's a different swing, I think. So on a four-hour chart, I just see momentum at this moment. But it is at resistance, though, and the question is, how is it going to respond to that resistance? It could be choppily like this, or it could start momentum, make a bear flag, and maybe uh, continue. And this was an ABC zigzag. Uh, you know, those things we never know. That's kind of the risk, obviously, involved with, with trading. Um, so that's why trade management is important, too. As we get more inf information about how it responds, that gives us more information on how to manage the trade as well. Uh, in entry, let's see. Well, also if the euro dollar and pound dollar start to move up, you know, this might be very choppily, so it might not be the best, uh, I think, to, it could be good to just skip this. It looks like a bouncing spot right here, in fact.
probably if it gets up in here and it fails to break the stop, it could be a, a high risk reversal trade there. All right, pound yen yesterday made that upside too. Uh, like the pound has been making ABC zigzag so far. So it reached that target or very close to the target. And uh, I, I don't know, it seems very messy at this moment. Yesterday's candle is bullish. I, I don't really have many ideas here, to be honest, so maybe we can move on. Um, ultimately, probably maybe it could still be in a bouncing spot, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's really worth trading that much, perhaps. Could be an ABC, for instance, like that. Could be good to keep an eye on, on this target, indeed. Could be a bouncing spot, but... I don't know. Uh, Urien is breaking that triangle yesterday we talked about here to the downside. I do think, though, that it's, it will get it to a bouncing spot once it reaches the targets, 113.40. one twelve sixty. So. Anyone taking this breakout, perhaps, uh, I think those are the targets that could be bouncing spots, too. Um, you can see pretty good breakout candle here, small consolidation, like that. That was a good breakout candle, consolidation, and continuing lower. Could have been good trading to the downside there, perhaps, if you were watching it at that time. Dollar cat didn't get down to 130, but already bounced earlier. At this moment... Don't see trades here either. I think if it does get lower to 130, I think 130.25 could still be interesting. All right, other than that, pound uh, didn't like uh, the short yesterday because it was kind of like having struggled to continue. If it got higher, uh, you know, maybe that would have changed things. I was thinking about 160, I believe, 160.50. Uh, now I would be very cautious with that and get out of any trades. Anyone who took any trades up in here uh, as price was retracing, I think, should be moving to break even, in my opinion. Well, I would, that's what I would do. Because this looks like momentum at this moment. It didn't really correct choppily. It was pretty strong, and now it's moving down choppily. So it could use this 21 EMA band, make it move up to the pivot point here, and make a bit of a bigger correction. All right, uh, let's see. Kajen. Ooh, Kajian really failed. Um, big wick yesterday. And we're talking about the fact that would not go long here because of this uh, weakness, but if it showed any bounce spot here, uh, but these two candles definitely not showing, you know, so definitely showing the opposite, right? That's not a, anything near... Uh, a bounce that I was looking for. So that's that's always the good thing about candlesticks because they, they give so much information about uh, whether price is bouncing or breaking. These are strong, strong candles, so you don't want to trade against that. And if you see that slow upside, uh, it could just be a classical ABC correction. All right, oil, let's take a look at oil here. Yesterday, bullish day, seems to be still in this small little triangle though. 
let's see if it has a punch enough to push above the Keltner and this resistance. Then there could be a breakout there uh, from where upside on this oil. It looks like good momentum consolidation. So it's a question whether it can break or not. <clears throat> DAX, uh, let's see. Open with a gap. Uh, moving a bit lower now. Still not able to break above this, this bull flag, really. Bullish day yesterday. I would expect this this move to be back, you know, go back to support, but from that perspective, a fib from here to here. And these levels could be bouncing spots. Well, all in all, it's very choppy. So there could be uh, an inverted head and shoulders perhaps here. This could still uh, be the break and a hook back for more upside. But, you know, it is, it is, it is quite messy. Goal, I think, is a bit clearer. It uh, is basically showing momentum, bearish correction, showing momentum upside. And it's, it's going slow, but I think it is pushing... Uh, towards the 38.2 fib, it hit the 23.6 fib here. If it breaks above the 23, there's space up to the 38. That should be a strong resistance spot for a move down to go to the target after 50 fib and the minus 272 target at 1, uh, 1,210. That's the same analysis as last week. Very choppy S&P. But there was a bearish break. Now waiting for, uh, I would say probably one more downside. Let's correct these trend lines a bit better. You can put one like this as well. So it definitely needs to break above resistance. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it, it seems more bearish to me at this moment with the break. And it could easily test this bottom again. Now, of course, it did hit. It went pretty deep, actually, here. Now, it is the 88.6 fib. I thought it was the 78, but that's the 88.6 fib. I just put the fib on. So from that perspective, it could break both ways. We've got to look at where it breaks to. All right, FTSE still hanging right in front of the top. And otherwise, I think we have nothing left. Unless you have a, something of a preference, let me know. We can take a look at that euro dollar pound dollar. Let's see how still uh, develop let's go back all right dot again yeah it's falling so let's see how far it falls Pound is the definitely uh five five six candles so fib here and i think it could bounce at these fibs now mind you that is a risky trade it is you know in in a trade idea um for myself i mean you know, generally speaking the pound is in the downtrend obviously but did break resistance here, and the way forward consolidation could last. And it did make probably an ABC correction here. It's at a fib, could be a bouncing spot. Alternatively, you know, anyone, if I don't like the five minute chart, sometimes I just look at the one hour candles to see if there's a strong close. That could be the same for this candle. Uh, your daughter, same thing. It too is in a downtrend at this moment, but. 
crisis at support, it too could make a bigger correction up before making the downtrend continuation. Well, if it fails and it doesn't bounce here, then it will break this trend line and then there could be an extension lower. It actually hit the 50 fib. 50 fib is not holy. It could, in this case, for instance, easily go to the 78.6 fib uh, because of the fact that uh, it could be head and shoulders. But yeah, we see though that five waves for the moment seems completed. Divergence between these at the matter of very minimum, it looks like this is, you know, start of an ABC correction, if not maybe even more, like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, there was divergence between these bottoms, and we see that uh, that played out, and we see a, the start of an impulse to the upside. So these fibs, I'm expecting to be support. I don't expect price to break through this bottom at 109.73. My opinion, you know, let's say more conservative target is the R1, 110, 10. More aggressive target is really at the R3 here, all the way at 110, 7, 65, 70-ish. If you are looking for um, these pivot points or the Admiral Keltner or any of the other 98 uh, or 100 more uh, extra features uh, that Supreme Edition has to offer from uh, risk, easy risk management, uh, easy calculation for lot sizes, uh, correlation, matrix, trader, uh, and alarm manager, just to name a few then you can download it for free uh, and use it, I think, for a month on a demo account. Uh, then you need a live account, though, but you can test it and try it out. And there are a lot of extra features there. So how to get that is go to the website, admiralmarkets.com, click on Platforms, and then go to MT4 Supreme Edition. There's also a web trader version, by the way. And the web trader version, uh, well, we can right away go there. Why not? The web trader version allows you to draw the, the waves on it. So let me show you quickly. It'll take two seconds. So you can you can do the basic wave counts. You can draw five waves. You can draw ABC. So that is pretty pretty handy here. Uh, I had an example here ready for you. Don't look at the count. It's just to show that you can draw it basically. ABC. This is the wave count doesn't make sense at all. I was just um, putting it on the chart so uh, you can see that uh, it's possible. You can do that by go to insert, you go to Elliot, and you have Elliot uh, motive and Elliot corrective. So motive is one, two, three, four, five, corrective is ABC. You get other things as well on this web trader. Very useful if you're mobile on the road, traveling on a holiday, um, and you want to be using more of a web based uh, version. That web trader is is the option here. All right. Um, regarding webinars, we got uh, Nena tonight uh, with his price action trading school continuation. Tomorrow, Nena and I take a look at patterns part two, and that's it for this week. Next week, we got, of course, a new schedule. Next week, we don't have I don't have a webinar on Tuesday, only Wednesday, uh, but the week after again both Tuesday and Wednesday and the weeks after. Uh, so only next week, Tuesday, not uh, for, uh, for November. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact that one markets like this website, but also these icons, as you see, feel free to reach out. Uh, I markets, uh, you know, Award-winning broker, multiple awards, as we've we've mentioned before. Uh, recently, uh, Germany won a few prizes, but also uh, in UK the, for best educator, and last year, best MT4. So uh, MT4 broker. So um, check it out. And um, any questions? Perhaps now still. Looks like the euro dollar bouncing at the 50 fib, indeed. As discussed, pound still lingering here 
close, but not there entirely. Doesn't look like there are questions, so no problem. That's great. Um, I wish everyone great trading, and I hope to see you in the webinars very soon. Cheers, everyone.